Okay, I keep uncovering all kinds of things um, that aren't buried too deep. That it just might have been in a box behind me. But um, I'm finding all kinds of things in the tidying up and organizing of my office, including a lot of um, scenes that I don't know when I did them, but it's been quite some time. And a lot of these are unsprayed. I have them in um, idea card formats, so. If you've been purchasing Stamscapes, I don't know, over the years or whatever, and you've been receiving idea cards with your orders, you might recognize some of these. This one's a, for a previous video done, you know, on um, kind of individual coloring with pens and markers on the stamps to give impressions. But uh, some of these um, came back from um, retreats that I went to, okay? So I'll tell you the, uh, the stamps that aren't mine. But that barn's not mine, and I don't remember whose it is, you know, or what company. I didn't write it on the back here either, but um, uh, I did these at these scenic stamping retreats that were going on out in Chicago, um, put on by, organized by Karen Wallace, and a really great uh, scenic stamper. But she had a, an enormous um, collection of uh, scenic stamps from all kinds of companies, and... Uh, you know, when I went out there, I probably just took a few of my own. She had all of the Stampscapes ones, too, so if I needed, you know, uh, Stampscape stamps, I, you know, I, I knew where to get it. We'd have all be sharing, you know, but um, anyways, everyone just brought out their own supplies, and uh, we just stamped for several days, and it was really fantastic. But uh, here's one that I did, Moon in the Forest Floor. Oh, this one was for a, a redo. Um, for a video format. I did a scene like this for Rubber Stamp Madness years ago, or it was in Rubber Stamp Madness, but then I didn't have it in a video format, so this one was that. Now all these scenes, I'm looking at it, and it, they are not sprayed, so um, they're looking a little anemic to me, so I'm kind of surprised. Maybe I, what I did early in those days was I was scanning them, I think, maybe right after the completion of them, so I have a nice saturated um, digital version of it. And I think that's what I was making my um, idea cards out of. But um, yeah, they're looking a little anemic. And I, I think spraying them would bring back the vibrancy and whatnot. But, you know, I don't know. Sometimes I even question that for the ones that have been sitting around for years. Um, some of it looks a little bit, um, I don't know, whatever, kind of beyond... Um, uh, repair? I don't know. I, I don't know. This, I think the spray would bring it back, though. It always does, but um, now see, some of these aren't sprayed, and they're uh, they're probably primarily Marbies. Marbies don't dry with this kind of dull sheen to them, like some of these. Okay, like this one especially. It's it's some other brand on there, so this was never on display. So it leads me to believe that the color and saturation is still underneath this top coating here, and see, I was only. Uh, only using black Marvy for my blacks back then, so you can see the black Marvy is still a little bit blacker than this underneath here, which is Marvy black, but other colors applied on top of it, so it looks really dull. I don't know, I'll, I'll do another spray sealing of these, and uh, I'll start doing another giveaway at some point in time, but um, yeah, especially for this type of piece right here, it you know, we can get a lot more saturation out of it. This one's really... Uh, fun piece right here with a lot of wildflowers in here with the uh, different colored gel pens and whatnot. And it just goes on and on. Um, some of these pe yeah, this one looks sprayed. Okay, now this one's sprayed. This one right here was um, Sutter Stamps, I think. I, I used on a couple of these ones, and I think this one was actually in, I put it into a uh, an article on, I think it was Scenic Lighting or something like that in Stamp and Scrap Magazine, or one of those magazines like that. Ooh, this one's really, really faded out. But maybe it was more subtle to begin with, so... I don't know, the spray sealing uh, video for these pieces should be really interesting, I guess. I don't know. You give it a few years and uh, they, they look really, really... Um, kind of faded out and whatnot. Anyways, I'm, that, that wasn't the purpose of this video that I'm doing right now. It wasn't just a show and tell of stuff that had come back, but um, I wanted to show some of these pieces and uh, 
Oh, it looks like some of these pieces are just pieces that came back from a stamp convention, maybe. Now, I think this one's Cracker Box Palace. I think we were out there at that uh, retreat, and I wanted to do something with her stamps. Uh, they were also a uh, Stampscapes uh, uh, client of ours and carried the stamps in our store. And uh, I don't know, I was having fun with some of their stamps at that retreat that she was also at. I always like this piece right here in this kind of elongated format. I've done, I think, another video using that plant right there. And I I have that plant. I think when I got back, I did order that one. And that was really fun. This one right here, I didn't remember at all until I saw it just now. But I, I don't remember whose stamps these ones were by. Uh, or these rocks in the foreground here, but I'm doing the same techniques. You can do the same techniques that you always do with other stamps from other companies and whatnot, but I'm still going for my kind of lighting schemes. That moon's not this glowing illuminated light. It's darker, but um, you know, I kind of have these light um, areas and reflected light shining through, but um, I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't know the name. Oh, well, maybe I do know the names. Moon, Hundred Proof Press, Background Trees, Art Impressions, Structure, Rubber Stamp Cottage. Uh, I don't know, Beeswax was the, were the rocks in here. So a big collection of different uh, companies. So I would do, you know, when I, I like using other company stamps as well. So when I went out there, um, I took advantage of uh, just having so many different stamps to work with, which is fun for me as a st uh, scenic stamper. Right here, here's one from 100 Proof Press. They're one of my favorite companies out there. I think this is one big stamp here, and I have a similar stamp to this one. I probably This probably came out of some copyright-free book, and I, I don't know, got the idea for my strolling stamp from something of that sort right there. And this is probably on just some big piece. So I tend to not like, you know, stamps that have everything all inclusive because you can't kind of vary them as much. You know, I mean, I could, you know, just stamp that building or just ink up this road and path, but they have those figures on there. So I'd rather have them different. And this was a piece that I was working on out there um, over the course of one weekend where we had... Um, uh, I don't remember what retreat I did this one at, but um, typically we're getting out there on a Friday, stamp like all Friday night, Saturday, Saturday night, and then a little bit on Sunday and everyone would kind of disband. But um, this one was going to be a triptych here. Now, I was doing all my standard techniques on here as far as coloring and whatnot, but um, I wanted these three to have three different spirits to them. So this one's like a spring I can see like greens and whatnot, and I don't know, this branch up there was, uh, oh, that person was beeswax. It's a lot of beeswax stuff. I love their stuff. Rocks, beeswax, creative impression, art impressions, and branches, hero arts up here. So you might recognize some of these things, and I don't know, you might have used them in a different type of format, unless you're a scenic stamper. Um, but they all work fantastic for scenic stamping. You can use them in all kinds of different ways. But I have a feeling this was the triptych like this. When I do triptychs, um, there are three pieces typically that have been stamped um, with the concept of um, displaying them together, okay, but on three different panels. And I usually like to do my um, side panels with the figures kind of looking inward and the center one a little bit more kind of vertical in format. So, and you can see this is kind of going that way. Uh, I don't know if this one has too much of a slant this way, but it kind of, everything kind of moves in towards the center here in that centered lighting. So I'm, I'm guessing this was spring, fall, and winter. So I, I should really finish these ones off here. And I didn't have like my full set of pens or anything like that. I don't even know if I had alcohol pens back in the, that time. I, I don't think I did. But these ones should be finished off, and I should do a separate video for them. I'll, I don't know, color these things. Now, see, that's something that I don't do a lot of, you know, looking at my stuff. I don't have a lot of outline designs like this. And outline designs, they take a little bit more time to incorporate in with the pieces, because you can see how these figures really stand out, because they're not tonal. They're, they're more linear. I do love them, but it'll take me as, you know, uh, the stamper to really render the all the shadows and things like that out which for me takes a little bit of time 
Uh, you know, um, but, you know, so be it. <laughs> you know, I'll do that. But anyways, what I was getting at that was this piece right here. And here's another big uh, Stampscapes piece. I don't remember doing these big full-page pieces out there. Um, I do seem to remember doing this one. And let's see, so the Scary Tree is Cracker Box Palace. I don't know if that... Um, haunted house back there is, but this really curled here on me. This doesn't feel like the paper that I typically use either, so I'm not quite sure what paper it is, but no matter. But anyways, um, God, this one's really bad. Um, I think it was curled up the whole time. But uh, anyways, I thought I would... Everything's kind of finished here, but doesn't this, this area down here doesn't look complete to me. All right. Now I thought I could kind of spruce this up a little bit and put in some finer details. Like I said, you know, when I go out to these retreats, it's everything that you can kind of, you know, have or you know, whatever you can kind of bring along with you. So I'm flying out to those retreats and uh you know, I I don't think I was putting things in check-in. I I don't know, I might have, but um you know, so I don't have some of my finer detailed types of uh, uh, media on me. I did have a, apparently I had a uh, white gel pen, but I didn't do too much on this because, you know, there was a, you know, we were stamping all weekend, but, you know, the time out there is finite, so, um, and I want to experiment around with a lot of different company stuff, so I got to take advantage of, uh, you know, Karen's collection out there, so. Um, I was, some people were just doing, um, uh, like compositions. They were just stamping out their compositions just so they can get a ton of, uh, different compositions down using the different stamps. And then what they were going to do was they were just going to color them, you know, after they got back home. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, yeah that was one of them. The, some people were doing that. But anyways, let, let me see about kind of just sprucing this up a little bit. Let me just use, I'm just bringing in some extra, you know, or not extra green, but some green into this. This kind of, it has the feel of that um, red balloon uh, piece that I did. Kind of this real kind of dirty, curtainy type of light, you know, with like really thick saturations of black in here. I think I'm just going to go over my, um, I'm going to sacrifice a lot of my uh, pigment ink uh, implementation in here just for the sake of I don't know just additional um, layering in here and uh, coloring you know for the sake of richness all right so this is just a real pale yellow I mean a uh, green and I just want I want, more, I want more life in this scene, even if it's kind of a spooky death, you know, things with ghosts and stuff like that. I want them to be nice and vibrant. I want kind of more, I want there to be a different spirit to that. That's supposed to be the moon back there, but that, I mean, that doesn't look like a moon at all, right, right now? So, I don't know. That's what I was talking to, talking about. When um, things are just, when they're outlines like that, I mean, there's certain things you can do with it. It's, you know, you can kind of color in like that, or, you know, you can kind of treat it like a, you know, like a coloring book or whatever. Take your pens and markers and whatnot and, you know, color those in. But um, I also like mass and things like that. So I think what I did was I, I really rendered out some shades in here, what I can tell. But... I think I want to do that with, now that I have some um, alcohol pens, I think I'll do that too. But I don't know, the spirit of this thing's kind of changing, right? Um, it has kind of that eerie glow-in-the-dark look to it right now. I don't know if that's what I was thinking, but I just know that it needed some other type of hue in here just to kind of liven things up a little bit. Spray sealing would bring out a lot of saturation, and that would be good too, but... Uh, 
We'll do that, but let's lay down some additional inks in here as well and see what happens you know, in terms of the uh, kind of the vibrancy and uh, and just and just the life of this of this piece. Let's see if we can really make it a kind of a fun, really deep and saturated, rich night for all these little creatures in here too. To celebrate their, you know, their one night a year that they can come out and, you know, have some fun, maybe. If that's what this represents, I don't know. Alright, so kind of coming around a little bit. That was light, uh, pale green. Let's use the peel paint. It's a warmer tone from, uh, Ranger from the form of the stress inks. Okay, let's take a look here. It's kind of that earthier kind of, you know, uh, it's kind of a, uh, I don't know what it looks like. It looks like a, yeah, like a beautiful, over the top of this one at least, it looks like a some kind of swampy looking, uh, color, color to me. I used to collect comic books, so I'm thinking of Swamp Thing, but I know no one knows who that is, unless you've watched the DC Universe and there's Swamp Thing on there. But um, uh, okay, let's see here. Get that in. That looks pretty good, I think. I've got this so saturated now, it's really, uh, it's really not accepting of the ink very much. It's just because the surface is so wet, so when I go on here, it's almost like you're kind of removing some of the ink. Okay, it's kind of interesting going over those, um, uh, pigment ink applications, it, they're affixed more than I thought they would be. So I guess, I don't know, leaving something over the course of, I don't know, eight years, I don't know how long it's been, se seven years probably? It's been a while. Um, you know, I, I, I guess it does get kind of uh, affixed to the card. Because even, you know, after you apply it the next day, that that pigment ink will just kind of wipe off. Uh, I'm guessing weeks afterwards. That's why I always kind of spray seal it. But on this one, I don't know. It was, it was on there, so. That's a good thing, though, because if you don't spray seal it and you have your pieces stored away or something like that, it's, you know, they're not going to be so fragile in terms of touching, you know, certain areas and having it wipe off, so. Anyway, okay, this is a really dark green. It's a bottle green, which I need a replacement pad for right here. I'll ink it because my pad surface is starting to uh, really break down. Uh, a really fantastic um, dark, rich color. But look at that green glowing now. It's kind of, I don't know, it's like life in the swamp or something like that. Um, New Orleans, you know, really kind of a wet, humid, uh, you know, environment maybe here. If that's where this is, whoever, who knows. I think this is Alice in Wonderland, I'm fairly sure. A lot of different companies had that image, because I've seen it from a lot of different companies, so there must have been some kind of like copyright-free illustration or something like that, uh, that a lot of companies, they would just go out and get those Dover books and just kind of isolate a lot of the imagery out of them and print it up, 
print them up and uh, I don't know those are some of my favorite <laughs> companies because um, that had a lot of that different types of imagery because I I love really finely crafted designs and uh, you know anytime you stamp out a design by one of those old masters you're basically incorporating that level of skill into your scene so um, you know those old engravers that would illustrate books and whatever you know they did that for a living so they've probably been on the job they were probably master artists anyways and they you know master printers so they were really good at cutting like finely detailed engravings and whatnot so you probably have the skill of you know someone that's been doing something for dozens and dozens of years or whatever and uh, are good at it so when I finish a composition like that when I incorporate the figure in there that's the equivalent of you know so many years of experience in my final piece right and so that's uh, I don't know I'm not thinking that you know when I'm stamping it out I'm just thinking okay what would look good there but in a sense you know if I break it down that's um, that's something that can be said about your kind of layouts when you stamp it out you're basically the artist of that composition there so anyway okay it really really changed it's definitely a green piece now as opposed to a uh, kind of that brownish tinged sepia looking piece I don't know, maybe it looked better before to you you know but I don't know I tend to like this I, I think I think things are getting a lot more isolated and whatnot and I like that and uh, I don't know it it looks a little bit more full to me and that's basically what I was going after I wanted something a little bit more when you're working this big you kind of have to take care of some things here and there um, just in terms of that sheer amount of open space um, within your piece so um, okay now I just happen to have uh, this same spooky branch here that's the name of it and I thought I would use a versifying I wasn't using versifying back then in fact, I mean, I've only been using it now for I don't know, time flies, but I think it's been a couple months now. And I really like it for my foregrounds. It's something that's really dark and it really stands out against that background, especially when things get really dark like this. Okay, so let's. Go for another couple impressions. I, this one I'm barely stamping it on the scene. I'm stamping just this top branch right here because I didn't want that other part. But sometimes I don't know until I put it in front of my card what I want in there. So I just want to further frame off the scene and to close it off on the edges. I think it would look a little bit nicer. Just to kind of I don't know, not have things so open. I, I want it to be a little bit more kind of imposing emotionally here too. You have this little figure here looking at the uh, house. I mean, the figure's not really scared, but you know, you, I'm kind of looking for kind of a creepiness, you know, and kind of this imposing type of uh, environment. It almost seems to be kind of, you know, reaching out um, from the shadows for the, uh, for the figure. But like in my red balloon piece, they just, you know, the kids seem to be nonchalantly kind of, you know, standing there, you know, in the case of the red balloon, he's kind of walking through the, uh, that area without a care in the world. So, I don't know, it kind of take, took on a little bit of a different, um, I don't know, scenario for me. It's like maybe that little kid was the, was the ghost or whatever, or he's not afraid at all. So it's kind of like... I don't know, kid overcoming his fear. You know, maybe that was a nightmare, but he just got his balloon and he's walking through and here, here's little Alice here, kind of looking at that house. 
She's got her hands behind her back, right? So it's not really scared. I think she's just thinking about, well, there's the house, and I'm probably going to go into it. Well, let's let's um, illuminate one of those little windows in here. I'll do it with a white gel pen. I should have done that before I stamped out the Versafine, because the Versafine's going to be really wet. Let's, I guess it makes sense to put, you know, the top floor should be lit, I think, but uh, it's so light next to that moon. I don't know if I want to darken out that moon. It might look better if I do, so it's just not so light up there, but all right, let's see if I can uh, take this white shell pen and turn the light on in one of these windows here. This is how you do it, or one way you can do it. be kind of cool to cut it out with an exacto blade, huh? Maybe on one side of the window and to just open it up like a hinge or something like that. This space is almost too small, but uh, it'd be kind of cool to be able to put like a figure standing back in there with the window actually open. All right, so this window here is, I mean, it would be both sides and that, I forgot what that type of window is called up there, but uh we'll illuminate that one as well okay i'm trying to be really careful i usually end up putting my hand in that wet pigment ink um wet pigment ink uh those wet foregrounds <laughs> can think of that okay here we go like so okay so anyways, one window is kind of illuminated. It doesn't look that good to me, you know why? It's because the building around it is so light. Okay, now that's the perfect opportunity for things that can get into spaces, which are things like the alcohol pen. Why didn't I do that before I stamped those? I don't know. I just wasn't thinking. So let's go out. Now this is like a brownish gray. It's a really light tone, so... I can kind of get around in these areas. In fact, maybe I'll do it on this whole uh, facade or whatever of this house. Let's get some of it kind of colored in. It's, this house is backlit, so it stand to reason that this front, whole front side would be dark or darker, right? Not necessarily in stage lighting. I mean, in stage lighting, you'd have, you have, I always say, kind of approach your pieces like it's a stage. And uh, that'd be the case here. But, um, you know, you can, on a stage, you can have more than one light source. You have spotlights, you know, spotlight in wherever you want and whatnot. All right, this brownish gray is looking pretty good. Maybe this, uh, maybe those pumpkins are um, something that I can color into. I don't know if I want to go real super orangey because I think they'd really stand out in there. I know, maybe this, we need like a bag. Maybe I'll put like a, like a sack, like a candy basket in her, you know, behind her back or something like that. And she could be going trick-or-treating here. So yeah, let's give this a shot right here. It's a little bit too uh, too dark of an orange there, but um, what we'll do is we'll do darker, and let's see if, well, I should have checked to see if I have a real pale orange before I did that, maybe, but alcohol inks, you know, you can kind of manipulate them in terms of the degree of application. Uh-oh. This alcohol ink is eradicating my impressions, my dye based ink. I think. I don't know why. It shouldn't. It usually doesn't. I don't want to see their faces as good anymore on the pumpkins. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, I guess they're still on there. Maybe I'm just. I don't know, maybe I'm moving around something else. I don't know. Maybe I stamped that out in a different color, like a pigment ink or something back when. 
Anyway, so anyways, there's a, there's those pumpkins down there. Those look lousy though. Um, I need to uh, I need to add some shade around them. So let's go and let's try it like a brown of some sort. Uh, I don't know my pens really well because I don't use them a whole lot in scenes. They're just kind of like embellishments most of the time. So kind of searching around. So that I just want I want a bit of a darker orange at the base of that to give it um, them some visual weight. Okay, so I like to add um, shadows. Oh, as many pens as I have. I still need more. Does that sound familiar? It's not like it's all of us stampers. Okay, so here's a bit of a darker brown here. Okay. Okay, this is this be almost too dark. This one's called chocolate. I need a lighter chocolate one. Natural oak? Yeah. See, I wish I had, like, gradations all kind of through these colors here. Oh, well, I mean, I kind of do. Here's a burnt sienna. Why is that burnt sienna so dark? All right, that's... Yeah, that's okay. Just kind of adding a little bit of a base to these. I don't know, I'm spending so much time on the pumpkins. Uh, okay, let's, all right, let's illuminate those pumpkins with um, some faces, maybe, so I'll just go like, yeah, let's see if I can draw on these, on kind of wet, uh, wet ink, wet alcohol ink, okay, so maybe it was better that they, I lost the, uh, the faces because I, I don't know if I would have thought about illuminating. The, uh, the pumpkins as jack-o'-lanterns here. Give each one kind of a, its own kind of look. All right, so there we go. Some faces back there, like so. They still, th I, I still want to add some, some weight to them though. It's not, I just not complete. All right, so on the grass, since we went dark down there, let's add in some darker green. Right? I can even use some down here, maybe. All right. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, they're not unified as much as I'd like them to be, but when I spray seal this, okay, I'm running in some green in here just to kind of make that house a little bit more a part of the surrounding area. So what you do is you bring in kind of some universal colors and... Uh, you apply them so that they have something to relate to um, in terms of the, uh, or they relate to the environment itself. So it's something that could be very subtle. I mean, you could, be, I could be doing it with a lighter green than this, and it would probably kind of blend in a little bit more than it is right now. But this will do. Okay, so I put a little bit of green in there. Oh, and I didn't see it too. There's this tree here. Okay, with this kind of screaming face on there. Okay, so, see it? Oops. So let's put some... I'll just kind of use the gel pen like this. And we'll draw that face in there like so. Yeah, okay, might as well just do that mouth to why not it's 
far as I can see it. All right, so anyways, there's that tree. That tree kind of disappears in there a little bit, but that kind of brings it out of touch, I guess. Okay, so um, here's these trees in here. It looks like there's a bunch of gaping mouths or whatever, so I'll just kind of illuminate them like this. I don't know, isn't that kind of, I don't know, a little bit more kind of playful, maybe? I mean, you might say it's spooky, but I'm talking about playful in terms of, you know, a visual within the space. Okay, right, so we have that. And do you know what I'm noticing here? My versifying ink is running like that. That is really unusual. I have no idea what this paper is then. I wonder if it's... Um, printer paper, like inkjet print, printer paper. Because it doesn't feel the same when I was doing something. It felt different. Yeah. Anyway, so you see how these are all these branches are all getting fuzzy. They're running. I don't know. I don't know. They don't do that on uh, on my paper, but I don't know. They're doing it here. So anyway, I'm glad that it's not going to matter too much because it's in darkness, though. So I don't know. You just kind of go with it. <laughs> what else can you do? All right. Now all these little eyes. I'm going to. Um, I'm going to put. A bunch of these other eyes throughout this piece like this it's kind of like those cartoons when you know when someone turns out the light and there's all these eyeballs everywhere The eyes are upon her, I think. Okay. They're wondering if she can come out to play. Well, I guess she's already out there, but look at that. All right, so that was unusual. So you learn things new, uh, new things all the time. I don't know if I learned anything here, but some papers that versifying runs, and is it because I laid down so much dye-based ink underneath it? I mean, it doesn't happen on you know these other pieces of paper that I'm using. So I don't know. It has that jagged, runny oozing feel. Luckily for this piece. Maybe that lends itself to kind of the uh, the feeling that I'm going for anyway, you know, this real smeary kind of look. See that? How it's kind of ragged. So, I don't know. I think it looks fine. I wouldn't want it to happen, you know, if I had a choice, but... Um, Anyways, this is a fun piece, and uh, I want to thank uh, Karen for putting on those um, retreats back when. Everyone always had a great time. I didn't go back to it um, after my... I don't know if it was after I did this one, or this was from the previous couple years before that, or something like that. But, uh, I don't know, I'm flight cursed, and every time I have any kind of connecting flight anywhere, it gets cancelled. Uh, almost every time. I just flew back east this summer, and that one got canceled. And it wasn't even United, you know. So, I don't know what's going on. It was Delta this time. So, kind of a fun piece right here, and I don't remember what months we went out there, but uh, I don't know. Kind of these types of uh, 
Halloween pieces that are fun to do at any given time. And uh, it was fun to use um, these stamps here from these other companies. Always enjoy it. Always have a good time. And uh, I don't know, maybe I did have some alcohol inks because that is definitely alcohol ink in her dress there. So I don't know, I don't know. Boy, that is really going back into solution. See, I'm trying to color her. And it's just absolutely uh, kind of wiping off the previous. And, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's kind of, it's, it's rubbing off my impressions on there. So, I don't know. That never happens. So I have no idea what paper I'm using. But it's a, some type of paper that is not conducive for kind of what I'm doing here. I'm kind of working around it a little bit. But, uh, you know, I mean, who wants to do that? You want, you know, we want, we want our media to cooperate, right? Don't we all? All right, so anyway. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have a chance to get out to a retreat at some point in time, I recommend you do so. It's so much fun stamping with other stampers that, you know, love the same, doing the same types of things you do. And, uh, I don't know, just the kind of the creative energy and the exchange of ideas um, is really a, a great environment to, uh, to be a part of. So, uh, And I learn things all the time at those uh, different types of events like that because you have a lot of cumulative uh, kind of uh, experience um, with all kinds of different media and techniques. And, uh, I don't know, it's a... You can expedite kind of the learning process when you're surrounded by people with that, those types of skills. So, all right, Halloween with Alice. I don't know. It's not really a part of her story right here, but uh, I don't know. Uh, fun to use her in this uh, composition. So, uh, there we have it. Thanks for tuning into the channel.